Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia. I post new tutorials every Thursday and sometimes I get an extra one in and this is gonna be one of those extra ones. So normally I post tutorials about tumblers and using lots of glitter, uh, but in this video, I am gonna do something that I've done before. It's not new, but somebody asked me to do this particular mason jar. So if you follow me, you know that I like working with mason jars, solar ones in particular. I like to put solar lights on the top and uh, decorate the jar for different holidays and stuff and hang it out on my porch or around my patio. So uh, this is just gonna be another tutorial of a different kind. Uh, I, do, uh, I do it a little bit differently than I've done the other ones. So if you're interested to see what I came up with, stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so I prepped these mason jars by wiping them down with 91% alcohol, and I didn't show you that, so I'm just telling you. So normally when I spray paint with the frosted glass spray by Rust-Oleum, I do the outside, but I'm doing something different this time. I'm spraying them on the inside, so it's a little bit tricky to get that to uh, work. You got to do a couple of coats and you kind of kind of spray it upwards until you get, you know, the coverage that you want. And so while they're out there drying, I'm going to go ahead and prep my solar lights, which I purchased off of Amazon. And they sit on top of the mason jar lid. So I just give it, I scuff it up with the, um, the, yeah, the sanding block. That's what that thing is. <laughs> I, I rough it up with the sanding block, wipe that down with 91% alcohol and I get it prepped so that um, I'm going to go ahead and glue it with E6000 glue. And so I've tried a couple of different ways to glue these down and um, hot glue released. So that didn't work out really well. And um, I don't think I've tried. I think I might have tried Gorilla Glue. I can't remember. So I'm using E6000 on this. And then I'm going to seal the seams with, um, oh, sorry, I'm using B7000. That's another like liquid fusion thing, you know, for jewelry and all that, you know, super strong, you know, hold stuff. So I'm going to get a nice thick coat and I'm going to just place that on top and set something heavy on it and let it dry for at least a good three to six hours before I go ahead and mess with it. And then the next step is I'm gonna take silicone and I don't think I showed you that. Um, no, I didn't show you that, I'm sorry. I took silicone, in the past I've used hot glue and again, um, the hot glue is released. So I use silicone, um, water resistant silicone to seal between the light and the, um, the, the jar lid so that it doesn't leak when it rains. And so now this is where I'm coming in with my designs. I picked these up on, I believe it was Creative Fabrica, just fairy designs. Um, I think they're Creative Fabrica. I don't know off the top of my head. And I think the mushrooms may have been like some other designer. I'm sorry, guys. So you can see I just put that fairy sitting on top of that uh, mushroom and I welded that together. And then I'm just sizing these out to be about three inches or three and a half inches across. Now, this is one of those bigger mason jars, so you can make it that big. And then for the grass part, I what I did was I sliced it in half and printed, basically printed the grass out in four sections because I'm gonna put it around the bottom of the jar and it won't go as one continuous piece. So uh, I had done it in the past with two and I wound up cutting it in half. So I figured, you know what, just save myself the cutting and just do four and print it out, you know, uh, four pieces of grass per jar. Then I just cut everything out on my Cricut and I am ready to start placing. So I placed the grass on the inside of the jar. Now, most people are not going to be able to do this because uh, unless you have a wider mouth jar, people really generally can't stick their hands inside. I have small hands, so I can do this. And I just place them on the inside like this. You don't have to. You can place it on the outside. And most likely what you're going to have to do is place it on the outside because, like I said, most people can't get um, their hand in these jars. 
Uh, and I don't even know. The, I think these are already the wide mouth jars, so I don't even know if they come wider mouth. But, you know, you don't have to do it on this particular mason jar. You can do it on another mason jar that has a bigger opening or whatever. This is just kind of a guide. And this, you know, is my favorite size, but you obviously could go smaller or bigger because, you know, they make so many different size mason jars and they make them where they have the writing ball on it, which I don't particularly like. And I like these ones because they don't have any indentations or, or writing. So they're super, you know, it's a super smooth surface to work on and which uh, works well for this design since I'm using um, vinyl on both the inside and the outside. And so when I use the vinyl on the outside, there is no bumpies like in some of the other mason jars. So I'm definitely gonna keep buying these and these ones I picked up at ShopRite. So, uh, you can buy them on Amazon, but I felt that I found that them uh, to be more expensive. And then the ones at Walmart have they say the ball on them, so I was able to find these without the writing on there uh, at Shoprite. And it's just in like I don't their canning aisle or it's like a miscellaneous. I don't know whatever. And they come in cases. So now I've got my fairy, and I'm just gonna transfer her using transfer tape. And I'm, you know, fiddling around in my drawer for my scraper so that I can varnish that down and just pick it up and apply it like you would any other vinyl um, onto a surface. Just make sure your surface is nice and clean. So if you've been handling it a lot, go ahead and clean it with 91% alcohol so that it sticks really well. And I did that. I didn't do that on this one and I did it on the, and I did clean it on the last one and for some reason... My transfer tape was like too sticky and it kept pulling my fairy up off the jar. I was getting kind of annoyed. So I managed to make it work, but, um, you know, de-sticky your tape a little bit and, uh, and then you'll probably have less of a problem. So I'm always using old transfer tape and I don't usually have a problem. So here I go. Yep. Let's go ahead and clean it with the 91% alcohol. Did it make a difference? Nope. It didn't. I mean, I mean, sure, it probably did, but when you look at the way I'm putting this on, it doesn't look like it, it made a difference because when I went to transfer it again and I was pulling it up, it started to pull back again. Oh, and I'm looking, I'm using a nail file to varnish it down because I couldn't find my Cricut scraper because I'm always misplacing things because I'm working between two rooms. So, and then I don't feel like running upstairs or downstairs to get the tools that I need. So then I improvise with other things. And so I'm using, yes, a nail file. Sorry guys. You know, sometimes it's not always ultra professional. All right. So I got her on super cute. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And now I'm going to go ahead and tape up the top of my solar um, panels because I don't want to spray paint that up there. Obviously, that's where the sun charges the battery so that you can, uh, you know, so that it lights up at night. And then I'm just going to give it a quick trim. And I'm using, you know, blue painter's tape. You can use blue painter's tape. You can use, you know, masking tape, whatever you have on hand that works and I'm going to take these outside and give it two coats of Rust-Oleum's Ultra Matte White and then they are going to be ready to be assembled when they are dry. All right guys, so once you're done spray painting these, just uh, pull your tape off. If you can find the seams. Seams are here somewhere. There we go. Screw it on, and you have a fairy jar. Now, normally I put a hanger on them, but this person said she didn't want to hang hers, but I'll just show you. These hangers I pick up at uh, on Amazon. And, uh, You just hang that up. All right, guys, these are done. So here you go, super cute uh, summer fairy jar for outside. You can either, you know, leave it without a hanger and just put it on a table or, you know, under your porch somewhere, or you can, you know, put these cute little, I love these hangers and I like hanging these up. You can hang them from, you know, any hook or whatever. 
So that is it guys for this, like super easy peasy. Go ahead and make yourself a hundred of these. It'll look super cute around your porch or your patio when you're having parties at night and they're glowing. And uh, that is it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, share, comment. I love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to check out my Facebook page. It's a craft thing and GMI's Superstars group, I, where they have a lot of talented artists who are posting their beautiful glitter creations every day. So I will see you all next time. Bye.